Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Medique Trust plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson and today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, custom and subtractive geometry within the Trust plugin. So let's go ahead and get started here and just throw down a grid so I can um, quickly put together some roof assemblies for us to uh, test. So again that grid tool, real handy little tool it's actually produced uh, by SketchUp and you can get it in the extension warehouse. Highly recommended for anybody that's doing any sort of uh, architectural work or just needs something to help lay things out. So let's go ahead and we're going to just go ahead and add a simple um, common truss assembly here. Uh, I think we'll do a 16 by 24 and go ahead and yeah, do all the advanced options. Okay, so there's a basic uh, truss roof. And let's go ahead and put ourselves in a... Uh, we could do a gable roof. Let's do a hip roof, rafter roof. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it right here. Let's do the same size just to keep things kind of uniform. <clears throat> I think I'll do maybe a 612 pitch. And okay, so I'm just going to regen that. Okay, so now we've got ourselves a couple of roof assemblies here. We've got one of them is a truss, and the other is a, a rafter. So, as many of you know, um, quite a while ago I actually added in what's called the custom geometry, and what that allows you to do basically is well, let's go ahead and let's do let's experiment with that. So, you know, typically if you go in and you, you know, modify this geometry, like I just deleted the roof uh, sheathing and cladding, maybe I'll delete a truss, you know, do whatever you want. Um, okay, so when I regen that or edit it, um, it's going to basically put that all back. It's going to Essentially what happens is in the plugins is it, it, it recreates the geometry from scratch. And so, you know, any modifications you typically make manually are going to be uh, eliminated when you regen or edit the assembly. So, of course, that is a problem. Um, and, of course, if you add in any sort of custom geometry into the assembly, if it's like a group, um, it's going to delete that as well because it just assumes that it doesn't belong there and it removes it. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to create uh, this group here and I'm just going to use this label um, thing to kind of, I'm going to make it kind of transparent so you can see it a little better. Okay, so so we got a solid group, right? And granted, this doesn't have to be solid for custom geometry. This is, I just, it just happens to be, but in this case it doesn't need to be. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to just create, actually I want to copy that actually, not just, uh, just create a couple extra ones here. Okay, so here's a couple um, groups. So what you can do if you want to retain, well let's first of all demonstrate. So if I, if I copy this and stick it inside of this assembly, which I can do manually and you know, and it's fine. Um, and, the, and the upside of putting it inside the assembly, you know, like if this whatever belongs, or let's say let's uh, air condition unit on top of a roof or something, who knows. But, you know, then if you happen to move the roof, you know, the, the geometry stays with it. But the problem is, of course, if I regen this roof, it goes away, right? So let's let undo on that. Let's click into that, and we're going to name that... Let's just call it custom one. You can name it whatever you want, really, just as long as you provide the word custom. And doesn't have to be uppercase; it can be lowercase. It's case insensitive, really. Uh, we could call it custom uh, AC unit, or we could say AC unit custom. The point is, you just need to put that custom keyword into the instance name. Okay, so now I've I've called it custom. Let's double check. Yep, custom AC unit. Now. Now as we regen this truss assembly, notice that it's retained, okay? And just to verify that, let's go ahead and delete that, regen the roof assembly. 
Okay, we know it regen because it obviously put that back, but this here is retained. So that's that is basically what I'm talking about when I'm talking about custom geometry. So it's kind of like an additive process. You can add geometry um, to into any assembly, roof assembly, wall assembly, foundation assembly. Now um, doesn't matter. You can add in any sort of custom geometry, and it will retain that geometry within the assembly. <clears throat> and this is very handy for you know adding other little features that the uh, plugin doesn't actually create for you. And you might want you know some sort of I don't know what it might be some structural member, some uh, peripheral member, and you want to have that retained within your model. And at the same time, you want to retain the parametric ability of the uh, of the plugin, right? So you can still regen this roof. You can still modify it. Um, you know, if I if I edit this truss assembly now, and let's say I go to a 512 pitch, um, see, it's it's it not only retains it, it also retains its position. So wherever you placed it, it's going to stay there within that uh, assembly. So you know, if if that was the case, and this had to sit up a little bit more, well, then you might have to come in here and you know lift that up a little bit or something like that, right? And see, and then if you regen that again, you'll notice that wherever you now place that um, object, it's going to keep it in that same position, even after you edit or regen the roof. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Now let's try something else. So I'm going to take and I'm going to call this one. <clears throat> um, let's see, we've got. Oh, it's interesting how it's. Uh, um, I'm going to reach them out too, just to try something here. Okay. I don't know why it was showing that instance name of that. In, I don't know. Anyways, it's kind of interesting sometimes SketchUp is with <laughs> things like that. But anyways, um, so let's go ahead and rename this particular block. We're going to call this one Subtract. Okay. Um, again, the keyword is Subtract. You can, you can tack on. Um, whatever you want. Uh, let's call this chimney one or something. I don't care. Um, okay, so now we've got a name assigned to it. Now remember, if you don't assign an instance name and you drop that group inside of this assembly and you regen this roof, it will go away. But now that it's renamed to subtract, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to um, paste it in here or I could have cut, doesn't really matter either way. And I'm going to, um, let's move it down a little bit so it kind of bisects the roof somehow. Uh, come on, you. That doesn't really matter. You can go all the way through the roof too. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it just, as long as this is a solid object, it can perform Boolean operations, right? Okay, so now that is inside. Now, if you go into the... No, sorry, not that. If you go into here... Oh, that's the wall plugin, sorry. In the Trust plugin, I've recently added this Subtractive Geometry Advanced Option, or uh, parameter. So basically, you've got three settings. So you can turn it off completely, which is by default, so it, doesn't, it actually doesn't work. And if you notice that your Subtractive Geometry is not working, the first thing you want to do is make sure you've turned it on in the global settings because chances are it's not on. So we're going to put it on full yes and just hit save settings. I think it was already at that anyways. And then I'm going to regen this roof. And you'll notice that I've added the regen to rafters and truss, common trusses. Actually, I think to all the truss assemblies. Uh, it's just a handy thing to have. Instead of having to edit it and then hit the update button, you can just hit one click regen and it's going to essentially rebuild that roof from scratch. Okay. Okay, so here's a good example. So now with a subtract instead of a custom, a custom is additive geometry, a subtract is subtractive geometry. And a lot of times, you know, something like this, maybe you're having it do something and you can put this on a separate layer and then hide that layer or tag. And so then, you know, you don't if you want to hide whatever it is you're using as subtractive geometry. So let's actually do that. Let's go ahead and um let's create a new a layer called subtract or subtraction okay and then I'm going to click into this I'm going to assign this layer 
subtraction. Okay, and even though I am s turning that off, so it's not visible, it still works, right? It's still it's that that object is still there. It's just not visible, and I can turn it off. And so now I'm chopping holes into, and granted, it can be any kind of hole as long as that as long as that object is a solid, valid solid object. You can chop whatever kind of holes you want. Okay, so let's take a look here. Ugh, I hate it when it does that. All right, we've got you know we've chopped out the truss, we've chopped out the sheathing, cladding, everything. So sometimes you know in situ, this is not you don't want it to be chopping everything. You just want it to be chopping holes in your cladding or sheathing. So that's why we have the other option here. So if we turn this now to sheathing. It doesn't just do the sheathing, it actually will subtract from the sheathing and cladding, okay? So let's save that, close that out, and then let's regen that again. And now you'll notice that it only chopped a hole in the cladding and sheathing, okay? So now people, of course, are instantly going to ask, well, what if I just want to take away the cladding and I don't want to take away the sheathing? Well, okay, so we can do that, just got to do a little more work. Um, basically, what I would like, what I would typically do, is turn the cladding off, uh, get on the sheathing layer, uh, figure out, you know, whatever. I'm going to draw right on this surface. Actually, to show you, I don't know, draw whatever geometry you need. Let's see if we got that working right here. Let's And notice that it, it is coplanar with that roof uh, sheathing there. Okay, so now I'm going to take and just push up like that, push pull it, turn that into a nice little solid group. Okay, I'm going to name the uh, you name it whatever you want. It can be the same name, subtract whatever the other one was, or you can name it whatever you like, subtract one. Uh, I'm going to put this on the subtraction layer. It doesn't have to be again. And then I'm going to color it this uh, red color just so we can see some transparency. Okay, so now what I've done is I've created a solid object. Now, right now it is not inside the assembly. So what we need to do is hit cut. All right, paste in place. Keep it in the exact same spot it was. And now it's within the assembly. It's got the subtract key uh, word in the instance name. <clears throat> let's turn the roof cladding back on and let's regen. Voila. There we have it. Now we have a chop in the cladding, not in the sheathing. Um, so, you know, you could do the same thing, I guess. You could have all the, uh, the setting here set to yes instead of just sheathing and you don't, you have to be more careful though. You would have to model it so that you're you know you're just chopping away exactly the sheathing and cladding or just the cladding or whatever you need to uh, remove so you know there's more than one way to skin this cat i suppose all right um you know that's pretty much it uh, i'm just going to demonstrate real quick um let's regen this roof here uh let's take this one here let's try subtract the one thing I just realized too is that you know once you have that setting set in the global settings that's global so it's not like I can set this roof assembly to have subtract only for the sheathing cladding and this roof is subtracting from everything. Um, I may need to give that some more thought and maybe make it so that it can be you know roof uh, unique to the actual subtraction unit or to the roof uh, itself but for now at least it's a global setting and if you need more granularity then you know you just have to you just have to place your subtraction geometry a little more carefully so I'm gonna take this guy now I'm going to cut and I'll go ahead and paste I'll just move it over a little bit same sort of thing this is a rafter roof um, let's put that let's like pretend like it's a chimney or something maybe I don't know um, so now that should belong in there. We've got the right name for it. If we hit the regen, 
notice it's taken out um, just the sheathing and cladding. Um, let's 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 uh, do something different here though. So I'm going to push pull this guy. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not in the right. There we go. Let's just drop that down. Okay, now I'm going to go back here, turn this back on all the way, full, yes. Save settings, close, regen. Okay. So there you go. So you can see that it has literally chopped away rafters, it's chopped away soffit, fascia, subfascia, sheathing, cladding, uh, you name it. It's taken it all away. So it it can chop through everything and remove it. So I think, you know, that's a fairly powerful tool. Um, again, we got the custom geometry. You can add in additive type geometry. You've got now the subtract feature, which allows you to subtract away geometry from the actual, um, you know, uh, plug-in geometry that's created. So fairly flexible, and at the same time, it is still allowing you uh, to not really have to manually edit, um, you know, the uh, roof assemblies, and thereby you can uh, maintain the parametric features and you can keep editing your uh, roof to your heart's desire. So for instance, let's uh, just one last uh, try. Let's change that maybe to an 812 pitch roof. So your customer wants to change up that roof profile. Maybe a 1212, but you might still have that chimney or whatever that is that's there. So see, you've still got the same, same position, same size. That, that subtractor geometry remains within the assembly. Anyways, um, yeah, just a quick introduction uh, to this uh, subtractive and custom geometry. Hopefully, it's helpful for you guys. If you have any questions or feel that there's a, you know, there's more features that need to be added to this, or you know, different uh, possible improvements, just give me a holler, and I'm always open to more suggestions. So, once again, thank you everybody for supporting me, and uh, we will talk to you later.